And so I think that means we're ready for our next one. So uh, joining us next is Dr. Sarah Thomas, Scotland Programme Coordinator from Wikimedia UK. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for having us. Uh, delighted to be here. Let me just, oh, wrong button. Of course it is. Hang on. There we go. Fantastic. Thanks very much uh, for having us. I'm delighted to be here. This is the first uh, of these conferences that I've been able to make it to. So um, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be able to be here. Um, this is me. Uh, this is my email and my contact details. This is a portion of my face. Um, I'm the Scotland Programme Coordinator at Wikimedia UK. I um, was previously a Wikimedian in residence at Museums, Galleries, Scotland and the Scottish Library and Information Council. Um, I uh, work part-time at Wikimedia UK, mainly in English Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, uh, supporting GLAM and education partners, as well as our Wikimedians in residence, community groups and volunteer community across Scotland. Before 2020, we'd not really done a lot in Scots Wiki. Uh, we did have some projects in the planning, uh, but they were disrupted, disrupted like a lot of other things were by COVID. In Scotland, we've also hosted a Scottish Gaelic Wikimedian in residence at the National Library of Scotland. So this session is going to reflect on the work done by and with the Scots Wiki community to recover and rebuild after the negative international press attention that surrounded the Wiki in 2020. I'm going to talk about on and off Wiki community development, partnership development, uh, the challenges that still face the project um, and hopes for the future. I'll be reflecting a little bit on care in volunteer management and why we should always remember that there are real people behind keyboards. As Scotland Programme Coordinator, I've been involved in supporting the community post-crisis and I've been impressed and heartened by the volume of work which has taken place since ScotWiki hit the headlines. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell the story of a group of editors and Scot speakers who were determined that the wiki should survive, grow and thrive. I hope you'll come away from this with a bit of an insight about what happened and why. Um, and understanding about what the community have done to fix the wiki, the progress that they've made, and some ideas around how community and partner organisations can work together for mutual benefit. But first, a little bit of background about the Scots language itself. Scotland has three languages, English, Scottish Gaelic and Scots. Scots, like English, is a West Germanic language and is spoken in Scotland and in Ulster in the north of Ireland. In contrast, Scottish Gaelic is a Celtic language native to the Gaels and very similar to Irish. Scots and English have a lot of similarities, such that there is a tendency to sometimes see them as mutually intelligible. Um, they both derive from the language of the Angles, but they're not the same. However, this appearance of mutual intelligibility, they often are mutually intelligible, um, and a whole host of socio-political factors has led to the Scots language being really looked down on, including in Scotland. Scots has four main dialects and 10 sub-dialects. Its history starts around 600 AD with the arrival of the Angles, but Scots diverges from its sister language in England around the Middle Ages. It's spoken today mainly in the east, central and southern parts of Scotland. But at one point, around 70% of the population of Scotland spoke Scots. It was the language of law and letters of kings and of queens. But shifts in power and religion and a lot of other things besides have resulted in Scots being seen as just not speaking proper English. Intelligible, but maybe not of the intelligent. So we have a situation where Scots itself is often seen as slang or just a heavily accented form of English. I'm originally from the northeast of England and where we have many words such as we meaning small, bonny meaning pretty, I meaning yes, lassie meaning young woman that are shared with Scots. It's also worth pointing out at this stage that Scots does not have a standardised spelling. It's also the case that many prominent Scots speakers on social media in particular face derision and abuse for speaking in Scots or are accused of bringing down the reputation of Scots because they use words or phrasing that might be associated with a pejorative stereotype of working class youth. So it's into this context that we place Scots Wikipedia. 
On 23rd of June 2005, Scots Wikipedia is born, which gives Scots speakers yet another place where they needed to explain that yes, it is a real language and no, it's not just slang and no, it's not just an accent. Early articles included the Scots Parliament, United Kingdom, King, United Kingdom Scotland's cities, chocolates, biology, botany, bi uh, cryptozoology and Scrooge McDuck. So a fairly varied spread. It starts off small, and by the standards of English Wiki is still very small indeed. It was 1,000 articles by February 2006 and 5,000 by 2010. By August 2020, it stood at 57,739. Now, one consequence of this international press fallout of August 2020 is that around 36% of that, probably creeping up on 40, has either been or is going to be deleted, but we'll come on to that later. Scots Wiki currently stands, as of yesterday, um, at just over 40,000 articles. So, in August 2020, a Reddit user started a very angry thread about how much of the Scots Wikipedia wasn't actually written in Scots. At this point, the Wiki had about 20 active editors and a few admins, with two being most active. One of the admins, a user who had contributed thousands upon thousands of articles to the wiki, wasn't a native Scots speaker. In fact, they were a teenager from the United States who'd start editing at quite a young age and often relied upon online dictionaries to insert Scots words into otherwise English text. Now, the language may seem very similar in many ways to English, but it is not English and inserting Scots words into English text does not Scots make. I should also point out that there are many, many people in Scotland, myself included, who use lots of Scots loan words into their English. Um, but there's also the case that there's a lot of uh, members of Parliament at the Westminster Parliament who do the same thing, which means that we now have Scots words uh, on the official record for the United Kingdom Parliament. The editor in question was accused of cultural vandalism and suffered a huge amount of online abuse. It's clear at this point that there is a huge problem or a huge perceived problem with the wiki. So these, uh, this is a selection, and I don't think this is even everyone. This is a, a selection of uh, the publications that wrote about the story. Um, I'm making a choice here not to screen grab the headlines. Um, I feel that to do so would be to further vilify the user in question. And if you want to read it, it's very easily Googleable. Um, but I feel that it's inappropriate um, to screen grab these things and to repeat some of the things that, that were said and particularly some of that abuse that was dealt towards that user in question. Um, they, to some point that they had things that they had posted on the internet when they were basically a child being uh, put around in international press and I'm very glad that uh, the internet didn't exist when I was their age, what we see. As one might expect, um, some of the articles uh, used the opportunity um, of this story to have a dig at the whole concept of Wikipedia, or as mentioned, to, to have a dig at the uh, user in question. I will add at this point that both ourselves and the relevant people at the foundation reached out to the user in question to check in on them. Now, I get it. I get why people want to write about this. It's a really tasty story and it's very embarrassing for all concerned. But one thing I always say that I always stress when delivering Wikipedia training is to remember that there are real people behind keyboards. And I would also stress that whenever I talk about this whole situation, that yes, this user was misguided, but they were not malicious. This was an honest mistake compounded by having a tiny community and a language that's often misunderstood. And nobody spends thousands of thousands upon hours editing and acting as an admin on a minority language Wikipedia in this way, simply to be a troll. We coordinated a press response. I would notice that I would note that our crisis comms plan came in very handy, um, and we responded to a number of requests from press. As well as the response being coordinated by the Wikimedia Foundation and by ourselves at Wikimedia UK, responses also came from within the community. Um, journalists, people reached out to people in the community for uh, interviews. One of the other admins on Scots Wiki opened up a, a Reddit AMA, a thread, a Ask Me Anything thread, um, and answered a lot of questions, put a lot of time in, and that was really helpful. So this uh, press attention and the Reddit thread generated a wee bit of interest on Wiki and a lot of discussion on Meta, just to give you an idea. 
this discussion was sometimes very difficult. Um, a lot of suggestions were made. Some were more helpful than others. Um, one of the suggestions made was nuke the whole thing and start over. Um, and that was an option, but it would ignore the fact that um, much of the wiki was fine. There were an awful, when I dug down and started to have a look into which articles were affected, it was also the case that there were many of these that were one line stubs that wouldn't necessarily take an awful lot of fixing. One of the outcomes of the meta threads uh, was the small wiki audit. Uh, another was the wiki governance audit. Both of these pages have been relatively quiet um, compared to the initial meta thread, as you might expect. Um, and there are some suggestions on here about checking in on smaller wikis that I think might really benefit the wider wiki community. Ultimately, though, when it came to Scots, the community just got on with things. They put central notices on to say, yes, we are aware that there's an issue. We are currently looking into it. Uh, they found all of the articles affected. They tagged them appropriately, started on uh, various different uh, strategies to deal with that. They um, appointed new admins. Um, and all of this had been done actually really relatively quickly. I was contacted by um, Michael, a guy called Michael Dempster from the Scots Language Center um, about this whole situation. Um, and he'd mentioned that there was an editor, uh, Cobra 3000, who was organizing an editor fun. I got in contact with, uh, with this user. It turned out he'd gotten the idea from the editor fun from an editor fun that he'd attended back in 2015, 2016, which was actually one of the ones that I'd run as a Wikimedian in residence when I was with Museums Gallery Scotland. So once again, as has been my experience, um, editor funds are useful not only for generating content, but for the long tail of advocacy, which pays off years down the line. Cobra 3000 was in fact the first Scots Wiki editor that I ever met. So we've been holding these regular editor funds uh, almost monthly since August of last year. It's an idea to do some work, but also to channel the interest that was uh, exhibited in the wiki, this huge spike of interest that there was in the wiki, and hopefully get some of those people um, to stay, to become regular editors, and to keep on going. Um, it only takes one person to be able to make a huge difference, as we've seen, but that can be harnessed for the, for the good. The first, uh, as I'm showing the outreach dashboard here, um, was probably the most productive in terms of numbers of articles. Um, and that's slowly been tapering off uh, in content and participation size since then. This was completely to be expected given the initial rush of interest. Wikimedia UK, myself, have been supporting um, these editor funds by running training sessions over Zoom. Uh, we use our mailing list and our Eventbrite. Um, we um, post on our mailing lists and advertise these events. I've created screencast videos of how to do certain things in Scots. We have a lot of users coming from English Wikipedia um, and some of the interface is slightly different. Some of the infrastructure is slightly different. So that can be quite helpful. We post messages on talk pages. We post in the community spaces. I've also been trying to keep active in some of the off wiki spaces, um, such as the Discord server, again, set up by Cobra 3000, um, as well as the Facebook group. These off wiki spaces are really good, have been incredibly helpful for organizing and for community support. This is a thing that would not have been tolerated, that isn't really tolerated um, in English Wikipedia. And I think that's a huge, really one of the biggest contrasts. These spaces, these off wiki spaces have been tremendously helpful. What I will say is that for a staff member uh, such as me, it does mean that I am devoting extra headspace to the project. It does mean um, these, the, these off working spaces do not obviously respect uh, working hours. So that is uh, an extra piece of work. It is totally worth it though. One thing that's been really useful was has been the collaboration with the Scots Language Centre for the ongoing editor funds. The Scots Language Centre are uh, a group of people. They are the, the centre for the Scots language, the Scots lead as it is in Scots. Um, now, for a few months, the, the Scots Language Centre were running a programme that was funded by the Scottish government, which is focused on increasing Scots literacy. One of the things that their research has shown is that folks tend to be, and this is an effect of the way that Scots is viewed and dealt with in Scotland, folks tend to be much less confident in their written Scots than they are in their spoken Scots. Some people speak Scots, but don't think that that is what they speak, don't realize that that is what, the, is, what is happening. And again, 
there's no standardized spelling. So there can be a lot of confusion um, and a lot of anxiety about what is a real spelling of a word, uh, what's an archaic spelling um, and what it's OK to write. People are quite nervous. So while this program was ongoing, uh, Michael had suggested that they use some of the time, the funded time, to support the editathons. So the writers that they were engaged with, that they had engaged for this project around literacy, would come along um, two at a time to our Zoom sessions that we run during these editathons for a couple of hours and would offer language support. We developed a model whereby one person would share their screen and others then would in the room in a very informal way could make suggestions about translation. If they're translating an article, make a suggestion about phrasing. Others, and we had some people coming along who aren't Scots speakers or who aren't confident enough, could go and look for sources or could look for images or for pictures. So we had this wonderful collaborative atmosphere. This model's been really excellent. And even though the, the, the Scottish Language Centre's programme has now ended, we continue with this model working with peer support. It's worked really well, continues to work really well in terms of language support, in terms of the community getting to know each other and giving less confident Scots writers more confidence. So of this whole situation, what was the outcome? Just a, a quick rundown. There was a mass tagging of articles which needed Scots to be fixed. There's a template fix Scots. And then a criteria for deletion agreed amongst the community. So looking at all of the articles that were on Scots Wiki, looking at those which had been um, written by one or two particular users, which maybe hadn't had any edits to them, any changes for a particular length of time. Um, and those that criteria was agreed for deletion. And then those articles were mass deleted. Um, I did a little bit of a count um, a couple of months, a few months ago, and it was around 36%, I think, that uh, as it stood um, in uh, August 2020. So you're looking at about 10,000. Um, and I think there's been a few more since then. New admins were appointed, new admins who were native speakers or who were confident speakers. Um, these off wiki spaces, uh, including the, the Discord server, Facebook groups were created. We've been holding regular editathons, trying to support the community where we can. There have been a few improvements to infrastructure, um, a couple of little tools that weren't activated on Scots Wiki that make it a lot easier for people to engage and to edit. We've done outreach and comms to Scots language groups, particularly the Scots Language Centre. A lot of the wiki, as I said, has been deleted. There is likely some more to be deleted. Um, we have identified this need for more investment in the, the, the wiki community and the language community. And we have had ongoing discussions with the foundation who've been really helpful in offering support. This is a blog that I wrote for um, the Wikimedia UK blog about how we were moving forward. And it's kind of formed the basis of a lot of what I say about this whole situation um, since then, really. I wanted to do what we could to move the story on from what one user did to what all of our users were doing, all of our editors were doing, what the community was doing, how they'd adapted, how they'd risen to this challenge. It will, of course, never get the same coverage as the initial story. I wanted to, as, pro, as a program coordinator, to do what I do best, which is to make new partnerships, to pitch new projects, which will ultimately um, benefit the community as a whole. It's much, much easier to turn a Scots speaker into a Wikimedia editor than it is to turn a Wikimedia editor into a Scots speaker. Ultimately, I think the reason that this happened was that the community wasn't big enough or active enough to be able to provide the kind of optimum density that's required for the wiki model to work in terms of accuracy. We need more editors. And this is something that we've seen e echoed by other language communities that we work with, particularly in the meetups that we've been running for some of the UK, Ireland and related Celtic nations languages. But we need more editors. Smaller language communities are vulnerable to the offsetting effects of power users. But that also means that it doesn't take too many more people to make a really huge difference. So while the numbers for these editathons might be going down, I don't think that might, it's, I'm very happy to give time and energy to a small group of people, a small group of dedicated people. It is, after all, the only thing that ever makes a difference. In terms of what comes next, we just need to keep going. This is a long term issue. We need to dig in for the long term and ultimately bring more users and more active users to the wiki and support the existing community to guard against burnout, which is absolutely real. 
the scale of fixing an entire wiki can seem incredibly overwhelming. We're currently having some time to reflect on the edit-a-thons, working on new outreach projects to speakers. These are not finished yet, so I don't want to say too much about them. But I hope that in the years to come, we'll have a much stronger language and a much stronger wiki community. Thanks. <laughs>